John Gallagher from learningherbs.com and Mountain Rose Herbs, and welcome to Herbal Basics. Today we're going to make herbal oils, just like these two oils that you can get in Mountain Rose Herbs, this comfrey herbal oil and this calendula flower oil. These oils can be used by themselves or in two other remedies that we're going to make in later Herbal Basics lessons, a healing salve and a lip balm. Infusing herbs and oils allows us to extract fats and fat-soluble healing constituents as well as volatile oils from the plants. So we're going to make two infused oils here today, and the reason why we're doing that is because in the future Herbal Basics lessons we'll be making a salve as well as lip balm, and we'll be using the comfrey leaf uh, for the uh, salve and the calendula we'll be using for the lip balm. So um, the smallest you can get a mountain rose here is four ounce pack. So we want four ounces of dried calendula flowers and four ounces of comfrey leaf. Okay, and for our oils, we're gonna need sweet almond oil and extra virgin olive oil. And the reason why we're using almond oil um, for the lip balm, which is what we're gonna use with the calendula, is uh, because it has a less greasy texture when we're making our lip balm, and it's also real nice if you're gonna make lotions out of it later as well. But for a salve, olive oil works great. We're gonna be using that with the comfrey. And finally, we just simply need two bone dry mason jars with lids. Calendula oil is soothing, moisturizing, and cooling. So this oil we're making is gonna make a wonderful lip balm. Now, comfrey is incredibly healing for wounds and skin problems. Make sure you never use it until a wound is cleaned out of all possible infectious material. Now, we're doing the basic folk method of making oils here. Oils with dried herbs. There's lots of ways to make oil. And just mind you that it's very different when you're using fresh plants. But this is just a way to get you going um, with something that you can do at any time because you can use dried herbs any time of year, no matter where you live. So I'm filling my jar up halfway with each of the herbs. I'm going to take my almond oil, since I'm, I'm using that for the calendula, and I'm just going to pour that on in. So we get to just a little bit below the rim there, okay? And I'm gonna do the exact same with the olive oil and the comfrey. I'm gonna take a little pause here and you wanna now you see there uh, how it's bubbling. Now it's bubbling because there's a lot of oil settling in. So what you want to do is get something really clean and just kind of poke around, stir around a little in each of these oils so it settles down. And it's going to go right below the lid here. I'm going to do that with each of these herbs. So now our oils are ready to brew or they're brewing. And the next thing you want to do is label your jars. Now, some folks use like mailing labels and all, but if you're using your lids and jars again and again, that can get really sticky. Uh, I personally just use paper and put some scotch tape on the top right there on the lid, and I know what it is, and I easily can take this off and reuse them. Um, so what I put on the label, just to show you here, is the name, the fact that we use dried herb, which is in Good, very informative. I like to put the botanical name on there. It's great to learn them, and it's a great opportunity to write it. Uh, what kind of oil? I put almond oil, uh, sweet almond oil, and the date. Now you want to shake these oils like so every day for a week, and you want to open it up and smell it. Make sure that the oil is once again covering the top of the herb. You might even want to uh, poke it under a little, or there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, but as long as you're shaking it every day, you should be okay. Um, you just want to make sure, like I said, that the plant material is underneath the oil. Because exposed plant material can also cause mold. Um, you really want to make sure you do this for sure for the first week. And I like to keep these while I'm brewing oil somewhere I know where I like, can see them every day, like on a kitchen counter. Because even after the first week or two, you can just open them up every once in a while and smell them and make sure they don't smell real rancid or gross. Um, and just make sure the plant material is covered. It's just really important to observe this day to day. Because heat and um, exposure to oxygen can really cause your oil to go rancid. And the, like I said, the water content can lead to mold. 
Um, so just watch your preparations carefully. Okay, so how long do you want to brew these for? Well, uh, at least three weeks. Uh, some people like to go as much as six. You'll have a better oil with dried herb with six. Now, once again, this is for dried oils that we're talking about here. But uh, like say for the calendula flower, um, when you start to notice some change, observe the herb when they become a little more translucent and all, you're just gonna know that your um, herbs are ready. So um, I suggest you try both uh, at some point, three weeks, six weeks, and try to see the difference because it really is all learning process. All right, so it's been a three weeks, and like I said, you can let it go as much as six, and I have my calendula. I'm gonna just demonstrate with the calendula because the process is the exact same with the comfrey. And um, once again, I just want to stretch, stress, you know, shaking it every day, at least for the first week or so, but um, all through the process periodically, and especially the first week, opening it up every single day and um, smelling it and seeing the difference and making sure that it's covered and making sure there's no mold and uh, so nothing, you know, funky can happen in there. Because oils are really temperamental, it's really of all the different herbal brewing remedies you make, oils are, can be tricky. As, but if you stick, especially the first time, to this method, you should have success. So I'm gonna take a bowl, and I have a strainer in my bowl. Um, and I'm just gonna be a little careful here and even put some cheesecloth. Some people use other kinds of straining cloths and whatnot. The point is you're gonna strain it and try to leave out as many particulates as possible. And I like to strain it into a ceramic bowl. Um, like to not touch as little metal as possible. Um, okay, I'm gonna pour it all in there. And the reason why you want a cloth, like I like you see here, is because um, I can simply gather it up here and squeeze out any extra oil, because there's some real good stuff in there. Okay, now we've strained our comfrey and calendula oil and I poured it in a jar here. And you can just store this in a cool, dark place. And it'll last for about up to a year. And you don't wanna uh, make you know, more oil than you think you can use. If you're planning on making salve, lip balm, take that into account. Um, but you can just keep a, a small bottle in a first aid kit or something like that as well and just rub it on topically. Um, like I said, you can use it topically like this, or you can just simply use it as a base for making a salve, a lip balm, a lotion, or a cream. Making herbal oils can be pretty simple, or it can be pretty complex. So to keep this video short and sweet, we left some information out about uh, the healing properties of calendula and comfrey, as well as a lot of the reasons why, um, including how to make oils with fresh herbs. But you can find all that information out in the Herbal Basics lesson on HerbMentor.com. This method is an excellent place to start, and you get some really nice oils like the comfrey that we made today. So thanks so much for joining me. So get these oils brewing as soon as you can so you can get on to the next Herbal Basics lessons, which are uh, how to make that healing salve as well as the lip balm. Thanks so much for joining me today. Mm -hmm.